Okay, we're back working on this 2013 Dodge Dart uh, with the 2.0 liter. Uh, in the last video, we had uh, replaced the thermostat. Uh, we had an issue with that. It kept throwing a check engine light. We got that fixed. Um, however, since then, it's been a little bit, uh, say a month or so, and we've developed a small leak. It's not leaking a lot of coolant, but it's like maybe a cup or so it's used over a month or so. And so we got a small leak in here. And uh, so I'm going to try to show you how to locate this. Now, other than, you know, visually looking and trying to find a leak, sometimes it's kind of difficult because it doesn't always leak, and uh, except when the vehicle is running and it's uh, hot and has pressure going through it. So uh, I'm going to show you this um, kit I got over here. And uh, I'll say the heat index is like 114 today. So what better day to do this? Okay, so this is a loaner kit from AutoZone. It's a $250 deposit to get this, but um, has all of these different fittings in here, and surely you will find one that's going to fit your car or whatever you're working on. So it's got all different types for everything you can imagine in this kit, and it has a seal and um, some of them have like this seal here that basically screws if it's the threads screw on and this hits against the flat it'll it'll seal it off at least hopefully it'll seal it off now the one that uh, we're going to be using is this one right here and let's see this had a number on it number 25 and this fits really well it has an o-ring and then it also has this little seal back up in here for a cap and so we got that and then we got we've got this pump and just a pump handle we're gonna pump it up and we've got the gauge here I said you uh, for most purposes you don't want to ever get you know above the green area uh, this um, vehicle will get up to 21 PSI, at least the cap's rated for that. So we should be fine. We'll get it up there as high as we can get it. But you don't want to exceed, uh, start getting into the yellow because you can start damaging the coolant system and getting too much pressure in there. All right, so we're just going to locate the overflow tank over here. Okay, and it goes without saying, you want to make sure this is cooled down completely before you ever touch this. You want to open this slowly, it still can have pressure. And we can also take a rag, just as a precaution, and put it over our lid. And if anything, there's still any pressure, this will catch it. Okay, we'll set that aside. Alright, so we're going to take this adapter it's just gonna go right down in there and the threads fit get that nice and snug All right so our pump <clears throat> it's pretty easy just a quick connect slide it down on here lift that collar Make sure it's locked. Okay, so now we can start pumping it up, get pressure in it here. Um, this is our pressure relief, so don't hit that until you're done testing it, but we're just gonna pump it up. So this thing is pretty easy, just hang on to it. Watch it, it'll take a minute to get it up to where we need it here. We still got a little ways to go. So we don't want to go too far. We'll have to let some pressure out. So I'm going to get it right up as close to 20 as I can. Alright, so that's probably about good right there. You can see that. Okay, so it helps if you have a general area 
to know where to look. Now, I recently had disturbed this over here doing the thermostat. So this is the obvious area I'm going to start. And uh, when I was doing this, I noticed that the fittings and stuff on this big upper hose, this is the one that you're going to have issue with. Um, this actually caused another car I had to overheat. This upper hose here, it has a T. You see that chalky chalkiness there around that T fitting. So there's definitely some seepage going on right there. And if you can see kind of below there, we have that nylon sleeve is, is wet as well. And you can see it's uh, leaking down under there. And so that T is pretty much leaking all together. And it looks like it's really leaking quite a bit there at the smaller portion. And come over here. And we'll see if we can look. We got a lot of stuff in the way. We got some coolant that's setting down there and we shouldn't have coolant setting down there so we've got it's either running down and it could be this um, thing here is not snug enough um, the problem with you know reusing an old hose like this uh, they get corroded on get disturbed and then they want to seep so uh, that that may need to be snugged up more as well but you know you want to look around definitely so we got pressure in it I don't see anything that's wet other than this area right here so we're gonna to have to get this cover off here and get a close look but you can even see right here at this fitting that's uh, running to this hole there's a little bit of chalkiness right there as well so there's definitely something going on with that fitting it'll have to be dealt with eventually Okay, the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to remove one of these bands right here and get this cover. I'm using an 8 millimeter. You can use a flat. Just loosen this up. Okay, we'll come over to this side and get this sensor. Okay, and then we can lift this up. Okay, now we can take a look in here a little better now this upper hose is the one that is going to fail because it has the most heat it is the one that is coming to the top of your radiator here now the this portion here is going to get hot and the plastic is going to get brittle and you can see I said see it better here it's leaking it's leaking under here we may even have something going on with this hose right here because it's definitely running all down that it may just be finding its way down onto the top of the transmission there the um, the lower one there looks fine so it looks like everything that is giving us problems is definitely coming from this like I said this has all the heat coming to it this is gonna fail uh, this fitting right here and the hose also even if you now in a bind you could get yourself a T <clears throat> and simply fix this to get you by till you could get you another um, hose and everything but if this is in this condition then you don't know what condition this hose is in and it's just going to be kind of risky to not replace the whole entire thing so it would definitely be good to replace this fitting and it could get you by until you could get a hose now uh, O'Reilly's I know has them I think they're like fifty dollars um, don't know um, if any other part stores have these I know that's one place I found them uh, everywhere else seemed like they had to order it um, but I definitely need to try to snug this up here up and uh, 
we'll take a look around here and see if I can see any other areas but you can see a little bit of seepage coming out we've got it pumped up there pretty good but a lot of times with this pressurized you're going to be able to see where these areas are leaking from whereas you know if it sets here and it dries out you're not going to know exactly what you got going on you can see how that is just seeping around there it's just running down on to that hose it's probably running down onto that hose and everywhere else and then you can see like down in here so what we're going to have to do is replace this whole entire hose i have had hoses that looked like they were perfectly fine they didn't even have these fittings and i left them alone and just over time uh, this one's got 130,000 or so over time they just get thin and it'll wind up busting on you you don't want to play around with a with old radiator hose and wind up you know ruining your engine you're going to have uh, really big problems so definitely just go ahead and replace the whole thing as soon as you can and see I've got a lot more drippage I can see down here underneath so I want to take a look around here and see exactly where this is coming out the most okay so I took some soapy water and I cleaned this here because I wanted to uh, see uh, exactly where this coolant was coming from uh, now one thing that I did discover my clamp right up here it was seeping a little bit around that now that does happen sometimes with these um, old hoses and I didn't have it quite tight enough so I snug that up a little more now I have had a stubborn hose where I put two clamps on it to uh, get me by so I tighten that up so there's no more leakage up there and you could see from the floor there was drippage going down on that wire right there so it was leaking a little bit around that now I want you to keep something else in mind when you pump this up to like 20 psi most of the time you're probably not going to have that much in the system it's probably going to be like 15 or so so you may find leaks where you didn't even have leaks but if you have a small leak like this where you're just losing like a cup every month or two this is the tool that's going to help you find it if you cannot visibly see it now you may be able to look in here and see where it's coming from but like i said it doesn't always work out that way and sometimes it's dry before you get to look and you can't tell where it's coming from and you know uh, this helps to pinpoint it so i know for sure this fitting is a big problem and it's going to fail and then we're going to be buying an engine if we're not careful so this is going to have to be replaced and we'll do that in a follow-up video but if i can put my hand under there see i had this dried by blowing it off of air it's just constantly dripping down onto that it's got this soaking wet so it's not horrible just yet but um this hose is definitely a small price to pay to not have um, you know any overheating issues so we're going to have to get this took care of and you know i've said i've got it pumped up still i've got pressure on the system um, i tightened that and i took a look around i don't see any other problem areas other than this hose right now so this has um definitely helped to pinpoint it yeah, like I said, I had it pumped up there pretty good, so you're probably never going to have this much pressure on your system, but this has helped me to find some really tough to solve leaks, and a lot of times it winds up being clamps or something like that, but then you oftentimes will have a fitting like that. So we're going to just push this down here and get our pressure off. And then we go ahead and just pull that up.
Okay, so I just put that cover back on there. So for now, like I said, I just wanted to take this opportunity to show you this uh, coolant pressure tester kit and how it works while I was looking at this. Because uh, I wasn't, I knew I'd already looked at it and, you know, inspected it. I could tell where it was leaking, but I wanted to make sure that there wasn't any other leaks on another hose or somewhere else because then, you know, it's just something that I'm going to replace this one, I have to go back in and replace another one. So I wanted to make sure that we didn't have any issues anywhere else right now. So this uh, kit's a good way of doing it. Now you may not need the kit, but um, I wanted to do this and kind of show you how this works and how helpful this can be. So replacing that upper hose is kind of a job in itself. Um, and I'll, I may do a follow-up video on this. But anyways, that's going to do it for this video. I hope that you uh, found it helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And uh, thank you for watching.